Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to walk you over to the lathe and I'm going to show you a job that I'm working on that was a perfect opportunity to demonstrate a technique that I have not shown yet. It's called pressure turning. Now anybody that knows what pressure turning is knows that it's an extremely dangerous thing to do and you need a very rigid machine in order to do it. Uh, the pressure turn operation is exactly what it sounds like. There is no grip on the part that you're working on. You're just sandwiching the part under high pressure between the chuck and the tailstock, and you're working, and any release of pressure on the tailstock and the part is coming out. Uh, normally, when you have a piece of aluminum, or my job specifically, this is an eight inch square, eight inch thick piece of 6061, and I have to do this to it. But this has to be good within two thousandths of an inch on the OD, so I wanted to do it in a way that I could trust it, I could measure it, I could get to it. You could do this on a rotary table, on a mill, with clamps 180 degrees apart, do half and half, swap the clamps, do the other half. It will be time consuming and not very cost effective. I'm going to walk you over, I'm going to show you my setup, I'm going to show you the part. And if you do this with a square piece, the resulting chunks of material that come off after this operation are like something that Bruce Lee would use in a Kung Fu movie because they're about as sharp and dangerous and deadly as you can possibly imagine and I really don't recommend you do this unless you have a tremendous amount of self-confidence a lot of experience and a very rigid machine so let's take a walk over to lathe I'll show you the setup that I made and I'll cut apart and I'll show you what the burr looks like when it comes off let's take a walk the setup for this operation is fairly simple Take a piece of material, put it in your chuck, face it off. Now whenever I do this, right down here in the center, I'll bump the tool in 10 thou or so towards the end of the cut so I know it's dished. So when I'm making contact with this part, there's no chance of it riding on a high spot in the middle. The driver that I use is just another puck. The bigger the better. I like to get as close to the size of the uh, back plate or back stock as I can but in this case I'm just going to use a three inch piece and on this one I have also relieved the center out as well so I know I'm going to get a good bite around the outside it's just going to sit right on there and push right up against real easy setup let me put this camera on a tripod we'll cut a piece and I'll show you two different methods of doing this stand by Okay, the first method I'm going to show is when you've band sawed your blank close to the diameter that you want, relatively round, but if you have a lot of pieces, sometimes you can't spend half the day standing at the bandsaw cutting pieces round if you're going to make them round anyway. Strongly recommended that on your backing plate, let's call this the back plate, you put some type of clutch media or driving media, piece of paper, 600 emery, 1000 emery, whatever you want to put back there between the plate and the part that you want to turn. Do the same thing with your driver. This will also help if the piece spins, you're not going to gall up the part and the back plate. Gentle pressure at this point, just enough to support the part. Pop your machine out of gear and spin it. See how close you got by eye. When it looks like your lines cut pretty close to running concentric, take a look at your live center, take a look at your driver, and make sure it's not oscillating like this. If it is, secure your part, back the pressure off of the tailstock, and drive it back in to release everything. I'm satisfied. So I'm going to really torque down on this. I'm going to snug up the spindle lock. I am going to definitely snug up the tailstock and I'm going to apply a lot of pressure with the hand wheel to create a nice sandwich.
since this is strictly a pressure operation, don't get overly aggressive with the amount of turning pressure that you're going to use to accomplish your feature. Be very delicate with your cuts until you have a consistent OD. Any eccentricity is going to change the load on the part and the tool and increase the possibility of the part slipping. Take small cuts until you have a clean OD. you have a continuous chip, you know you have a clean diameter. Now the size of the material that you use as your backing plate is completely up to you. If all you want to do is turn this down, then by all means use a piece as big as you want to. But if you want to get around the back of your plate for any reason, then you're going to need a part that's a little bit smaller. I intend to deburr the front and rear of this part while it's in this setup, and you can't do that if you had a backing plate that was larger than the part. Let's pull these chips off of here. I'm going to get some of this paper out of the way. And when you do this, be very careful of the burr on the back side of the part. It's like a razor blade. and Boy, it'll take care of you real quick. So don't get caught. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to play in that area. Put my deburring tool on there, clean it up, take it out. Nice OD, nice chamfer both sides, clean diameter, all is well. Let's take a look at the second way to do this. This time we're taking the part right off the saw and sticking it in. Now if you're human, chances are your skin just tangled thinking about the possibility of an accident. Which is why I'm saying this is an incredibly dangerous thing to do, but it does work. Let's get the paper back in the driver. Oh, there we go. carriage out of the way. And bear in mind, you have to pay attention to whether or not these corners are going to clear your ways, clear your carriage, clear everything else. So when you do this, do it really slow initially. And you can see how that's running out. And we're just going to bump it until it doesn't run out. I am gently lightening up on the pressure on the tailstock 
to try to get this to run a little bit better. That's pretty close, but not close enough. There you go. When you have something that you like, smash down on the tailstock. And it's a good idea, for sake of gravity playing into this, that the handle on their hand wheel is on the back side of rotation. So that any vibration, it still wants to tighten up. That's pretty close. Well, needless to say, with these corners coming around, that is incredibly dangerous. We're going to tree pan those corners off without ever having put this part on a bandsaw. Let's take a look at the tool. There are two things to note about the tree panning tool that I'm going to use for this operation. First of all, the first part of the tool that's going to make contact with this plate is the inside. You can see, if I can do this with a, move it a little closer, you can see that it's the inside edge of the tool that makes contact first. And what that's going to assure is that the big the drum cymbal burr that's going to be formed by this operation stays with the material that comes off, which is why this is uh, very dangerous. What comes off is incredibly sharp. The ideal setup is as shown. You want the face of that tool to be completely within the boundary of the material. Having a little web on the outside of the tool will guarantee that when these four corners come off, they come off in one continuous piece and stay with the chuck. If this is your situation here, well this increases the level of complexity and danger, I would say considerably because now the risk of these things coming off like little kung fu stars is pretty good. So if you can cut your material to allow for the width of your tool plus about a sixteenth of an inch per side, that is the ideal setup. Even this way, the rake on the front of this tool will help to form a web between these pieces so long as there's some engagement. But trust me, this machine is a lot stronger than that web is. And if these guys want to come flying out of there, they're going to. Let's get back on the tripod, push this tool in there, and see what happens. Alright guys, I'm going to do this. I'm definitely going to stand to the side while I'm doing it. Because safety is number one. This is a... 8 inch square plate, 8 inch thick, 6061. The tool is about 120 wide. It's got about a 5 degree back grind to the nose. 320 RPM. And this is standard white paper between all the setups. Let's see what happens. You'll be able to hear the material yield just as this tool is breaking through the back side of the part. It'll start to crunch. Just because the material gets so thin. At that point, turn the machine off naturally and feel the back of your part. If you feel a protrusion from the material being displaced, chances are the tool has passed beyond the rear plane and you can take pliers and break these off if you don't want to run it through to completion. Well, let's just see what happens. Okay. 
Okay, you hear the crunch? It's a good time to stop. We're right there. Let's slip the machine out of gear. And you can see that it's ready to come off. I don't know about you, but I don't want this coming at me at 320 RPM, or any RPM for that matter. Look at this. How would you like that coming over your left shoulder at 400 miles an hour? No thanks. Alright, from this point forward it's just a conventional turning operation. You can deburr the front and back if the back plate is small enough. It's called pressure turning. It is not for the faint of heart and it is very dangerous. So if you do attempt this, start with something simple like a piece of plastic or a piece of wood until you get a feel for the setup. Be careful and stand to the side. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, well that's my demonstration for today on pressure turning. And I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, film that and show you. This is an actual part that I need to do a lot of surface milling on and complete probably later on today. But do be careful if you are going to tree pan a square piece into a round piece. That is incredibly dangerous. And the burr or the chips or the remnant chunks on the corners that come off you saw what they look like and they are razor sharp and will do major damage if they get a hold of you so strongly suggest that you bandsaw all the perimeter of your part before you try that use a lot of pressure use a backing paper emery cloth whatever you have that's going to add a little bit of friction like a clutch make sure everything is nice and tight stand to the side and have at it be safe watch your hands that's all i got for you today Figured you might enjoy that. This is going to be a shorty. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.